All right, guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna do something a little different. We are going to do an unboxing video. So I'm gonna preface this and say that I've never done an unboxing video, uh, and also the product that I'm gonna be unboxing, I have never seen in person, never held in person, never used in person. So you're gonna get my true 100% just first initial reaction on the new Wilcox Raid XE. So here we go. So Anybody watching this video probably knows that the Raid XE was announced a long time ago. I believe it was like end of 2020, maybe early 2021. Honestly, I can't remember. And, you know, there was a lot of hype around it. And then the product never came. And so I know that Wilcox had, had some issues with logistics, and I know they were changing up some different designs and stuff like that. But, you know, there was a lot of hype there, and then the hype just kind of dwindled just because the product never came out. So, uh, you know, we've been working very closely with Wilcox, you know, uh, obviously selling their products, their mounts and everything, but also we are one of their uh, master distributors. So uh, we were, you know, we're, we're pushing for these Raid XEs to come out where we could get these out into the hands of, you know, law enforcement and military and, you know, get some feedback and also let us get out there and use them, you know, and that way we can see, you know, we can T&E these and, um, and, you know, and see, you know, is the new Raid XE, you know, is, is it worthy of one of the top spots? Now, so the Raid X, so this is the older generation. This is the Raid X. Um, I've actually been pretty partial to the Raid X. I really like the Raid X. Um, you know, the other, you know, next gen laser is obviously the L3 Ingall. Great laser. You know, it's phenomenal. Um, I've got those on multiple different systems. You know, um, everybody here really likes them. Um, the Raid X, it, it's just a little different. You know, it, it's got a, you know, kind of a different layout. Uh, I really like all the button placement, but but that's not to say I didn't have, you know, cons or I didn't have things that wish I would see change. One of the main things that I would love to see change um, is the battery cap. Um, it uses a kind of half turn kind of throw here. So you know, obviously I got a battery in there, but if you have a battery um, in here, whenever you are loosening this up, it does kind of pop off. But if you don't, you can be kind of pumped to get open. Uh, biggest thing is, is it's got a very hard detent. So if you have this mounted onto a weapon system and you have a light or anything right here on the side, but also remember it's on the rail, so you can't really get to it. So you, you know, pushing in, pushing down and turning, it's not that easy to, uh, to get that battery uh, cap off there. Um, that was one of my complaints. Another one of my complaints was probably honestly the biggest, and that is the detent on the switch. The detent on the switch, very easy to turn. Let me see that. Just very easy. And so for, you know, for traveling, throwing it in and out of bags or even out in the field, you could inadvertently kind of switch and change, you know, its output or you could kick it from, you know, visible and be moving around in a dynamic situation and it kicked off or, or what have you. So that was one uh, thing that I, you know, wasn't a big fan of on there. Um, outside of that, it's a little thing, but the, um, the lens cover here in the front, you kind of shove it down in there in the hole and then to stow it, it pops out like that and then you slide it down in this groove. Now, once it's now stowed down in the groove, it's nice and it's clean, it's right there. And, uh, you know, but it's a nice tight package, plenty of power, um, you know, really like the uh, diversions for the eliminator because you can just sit and spin it right there. So when it is out onto a weapon system, you can use your thumb to roll this right here. And as you roll this right here, it's going to, you know, change the diversions on your eliminator. Um, so outside of that, that's, you know, there we go. There is the Raid X. So now, Let's see the new guy. So, not 100% sure, but pretty sure they used to just ship in a brown bag. So now we get this nice box, and we've got on here, we have the Raid XE. It is green, high power, single cable, and non berry um, I mean, guys, this literally just got here. Date counted, 9-22-22. So, I mean, what is say the 27th? So, I mean, so it's you know, fresh off the line. So, Yep. So there's our brown bag. Pretty sure it's in these. So the bag's different. It looks like it is now laser cut okay. from the old uh, bag. Forgot about the tag. Of course, I didn't bring scissors. Don't need scissors. Okay, so we've got our you know, serial numbers and everything. So, okay. So, first thing, we've got our manual. Quick reference guide. We've got a cleaning cloth. And we have a tape switch. I like that tape switch. Seems very high quality. But there we go. 
the new RAID XE. Looks to be the same height and looks to be a hair larger now. So they've changed the design on the lens cover. So as you can see right here, now you have this that kind of pops down there and then it kind of goes down into the lens assembly. All right, so that's pretty nice and clean. Now stowing it when in use is going to sit up a little bit. Don't necessarily think that's going to be a, um, you know, like a snag hazard or anything. Um, but, you know, I was complaining about how that one was. So I guess I can't complain too much. I'll have to look through this. Uh, the pictures that I saw did have kind of a harder uh, kind of a barn door kind of deal that came down on it. So it might be in the bag. So now we've got, oh, so we've got our place right here for our, tape switch. We still have the same divergence control right here for our illuminator. We still have our OLED screen over here with our door that can bring it down for shielding. And we have the same battery cap. <laughs> That's what I was talking about a minute ago. About it not being the easiest to get off when there's not a battery in there. So yeah, you, you can't see it. I'll do a close up, some close up video here in just a minute. Uh, but you've got kind of these, it's not a normal, you know, ridge and valley threading. It's uh, It uses these little cut downs that go into a detent. So, we'll throw a battery in there in just a second, but I'm very curious. My other complaint was the detent on the actual switches. Okay, now that is much better. I mean, you can hear those clicks versus the X. Like the X just spins around. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it just spins around no problem. Nice tactile clicks. Really like that. Don't have, you probably won't have any concerns through normal, you know, transportation or, you know, any kind of, um, any kind of usage, dynamic usage, anything like that. You're not going to worry about that really, you know, inadvertently changing settings on you. So button controls are a little different. Um, get that center button's a little bit bigger. Um, the buttons are softer uh, to press, but they do have more of a tactile click. Here's the XE. And here's the X. I don't know if y'all can even hear that or not. Again, sorry. Don't usually do unboxing videos, but want you guys to get kind of our initial kind of impression on these. I like the look. I like the, uh, I mean, I like, it does look like it's two different materials. Yeah, I can kind of, I can scratch the base. So as you can see here from the sticker up, uh, the top is some form of uh, polymer or Delrin, maybe like a carbon fill or something, but the bottom is definitely uh, some form of alloy because I can take and kind of mar it up with my fingernail. Um, you know, we still have our dual crossbars for mounting. Okay, so we're going to the rest of it. Let's see what else we got in here. We have our, uh, you know, very heavy duty toothbrush. You know, if you need that in the field. Yeah, there's what I was talking about. So this is obviously an, a different lens cover. So this is hard. It's made out of the same stuff that the uh, top of the unit is made out of. And it kind of flips up like that. So you have a hard lens cover right there. See, I like that. I like that. That way it's not, depending on how high that mounts up, but it doesn't look like it's going to mount that high. I'll have to throw that on. I don't know if I'll do that on video or not, but we'll, uh, we'll check that out. And it uses screws for mounting it in place, apparently. I am interested in the tech switch. All right, guys, here is the pressure pad tape switch for the new XE. This is, I really like this. Nice tactile buttons, built like a tank. Yeah, I like that. Okay. 
I do have a little shelf kind of rail right there, so I'm betting that has something to do with this right here, which looks to be some kind of kind of rail system or rail grabber. Yep, it is. Well, I'm not gonna shove it in there just yet, because I want to make sure you know I'm not putting it in there wrong or doing something that I need to do different. Um, but pressure pad is very nice. We obviously got our little got our little zip ties in there, got our Velcro, and then we've got what which looks to be uh, Picatinny rail grabbers uh, for that. Allen key to take out our high power screw. So on the raids, you put the screw down into here. And on L3 units, it's on the side um, or it could be on the top. But I do like how the Wilcox puts it on the back. And that is your control for your divergence. Now it is a little bit easier to move on the XE. It's like you can hear a like a spring inside there that is rolling over as I change the divergence for the eliminator. And then we have a actual okay, so on the previous right X, there was a plug that went down in here. If you uh, were not using the tape switch on this it has an actual metal screw cap yeah definitely a different type of plug like that because I don't actually run pressure pads in the majority of my weapon systems uh, just because pressure pads fail and so for the for 99% of my use I am setting the units off with the actual onboard button um, and I assure you the tape switches do fail I'm not saying that this one will um, but tape switches they do fail um, and so that's why I, you know, train like I fight. Yeah. So I uh, make sure not to, to use those and with that training aspect. So let's throw a battery in this guy. And here we go with this battery capping in. Not a big fan of the battery cap. Okay. So we do have a battery indicator on the direction. Um, on the RAID X, you do not. Not that that's a big deal at all, um, but it does help, you know, because, you know, different devices, you know, they go in different ways. But right here, we do have that. So we get that in there. So this guy on. There he is. The, the reason why, uh, talking about the battery cap, the reason why that I'm not a big fan of the battery cap is uh, right here, you just saw me kind of struggling to get it on. Now, when you do have a battery in here, um, it is easier to get off because it has that spring has, you know, back pressure to it. And so it will kind of pop off when you don't have a battery in here. It does make it uh, difficult to get it on and off. But the biggest thing is, is if you have this mounted to your rifle, which you would, um, and you need to change the battery, you don't want to remove it from your rail system because you don't want to lose the zero that you've already set. Um, it's very hard to get to because this is obviously down on a rail. And if you, especially if you have a light ready, which is how I run mine. I run a light, and uh, especially like the, the Surefire you know, Pro Series or the DF or whatever, that you can take them up right next to it. So you can't really get in there to get a hold of the battery cap, uh, take it off. Now, it does seem like it is easier. Um, it's not as much of a turn. No, it's just easier, actually, to take it on and off. So, okay, so the... Yeah, it is definitely easier to spin. So they have definitely changed out something on the D10 on there. Um, but, okay, let's go to Viz. This did say it was green. All right. Okay. Wow. I don't know if y'all can see that beam, but Jesus, that is bright. Yeah. That is insanely bright. I mean, you can see the beam in here, and not that it's really, really lit, but as bright as that is, I'll have to take this thing outside. I bet you money you can probably see that easily on an overcast day. You might be able to see that in full sun. That is crazy bright. So compare that to this. So low power, low power. Obviously, this is red, but 
Okay, about the same, looks about the same power output. Now I know the green, the green color and green diodes, they give you what seems to be a, a brighter uh, laser, but my goodness, that's a major difference. I don't know if you, the camera can pick this up or not, but you cannot see the beam on the red laser, but on this, I mean, I can see the laser all the way across. I, again, I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not, but I mean, I can see that laser, the whole beam all the way out to where it impacts the wall. It's definitely bright. Speaking of bright, let's look at here. So on top of the XE, the new one, we have 520 nanometers. We've got uh, 42 milliwatts, 850 nanometers, 36 milliwatts, and 840 nanometers, 90 milliwatts. Comparing that to the X, 625 to 640 nanometers is 100 milliwatts. 640, or sorry, sorry, 840 to 860 nanometers is 45 watts, and then 840 to 865 is 100 milliwatts. So, again, going through the different power outputs, you would think that this would be much brighter, but it's not. <laughs> so, looking at the top right here, the controls are very, very similar. Uh, we got a little bit of button design change right there. Um, this has more kind of clean lines, you know, kind of that race car feel. This has got more kind of a rounder, um, you know, kind of subdued look. Um, I actually like the look of the new XE more than the uh, X, which I mean, I did not not like the X, but um, your elevation and windage adjustments, solid, you know, whereas on the end goal, you have to find the smallest little flathead screwdriver, you know, because you just have those in the field. Um, to adjust those, but these you could easily use a casing, um, a flathead, a Phillips head, um, nice, nice large, you could, could purchase on that. So, uh, so yeah, RAID X, the new RAID XE. So, I really do like this pressure pad. Anything else in here? Nope. So, guys, we will be doing obviously more. You know, videos going over the new Wilcox Raid X E, but uh, for right now, I just want to kind of give you the initial impressions. I'm gonna to have to play with this a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna change out and put um, this new this other cover on here, and just to see how I like that. Um, but outside of that, it is very very solid. I mean, it, it feels like a tank. It's definitely a little bit heavier. Um, it's not bad by any means, but um, it it feels like it's a tank completely. So uh, so yeah. So guys, we'll be uh, we'll be doing obviously more videos like this and other videos. We are trying to, you know, help and educate um, the community, and we're trying to push this industry further. So if there's ever any questions that you guys have, don't ever hesitate to shoot us a call. You know, shoot us over an email, drop us a DM. Uh, we've got a lot of videos on YouTube. We're posting more videos on YouTube and Instagram daily. Uh, we're trying to just get information um, because if you have a question, more than likely somebody else has a question too. So. Um, you know, it's kind of all saying there there's no stupid questions. There's only stupid answers. So if you guys ever have any questions about night vision, lasers, general usage, whatever it is, don't ever hesitate to give a to Arms a call. We'll get you squared away. And um, outside of that, well, uh, you guys stay safe. We'll see you out there. And until uh, next time.